Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to the channel, friends. It's time for a little Saturday morning react tunes featuring Robotech Masters, specifically episode 41, Half Moon. Friends, I've been enjoying the hell out of Southern Cross. I can't wait to see some more because uh, episode 40 volunteers, one of my favorites in the entire series. If you could do me a favor before we get started, hit that like button, smash that subscribe, ring that bell for notifications. It greatly helps out a small channel and it allows me to alert you next time we go live with Saturday Morning React Tunes or Robotech. And of course, if there's anything that we do that you would like early or in its full length format, the link to our Patreon, it's in the description, my friends. But all of that is then and this is now, and now it's time to watch Robotech Masters episode 41, Half Moon. Prepare to engage maximum warp reaction. And away we go. Fanfare. It's a little weak, my voice is shot. <laughs> I am a, so far, let's, let's preface everything, everybody, let's, so far the Southern Cross leg has been really good, and uh, I have enjoyed Dana probably more than I should, because uh, a lot of my friends that I have talked to that have seen us before, whenever I say that ah, I really like Dana, I get a look of who are you and what have you done with our friends, so I don't know how you all feel about Dana. I actually really think she's a good representation of the child of Max and Maria. I think that is a very realistic personality for uh, our heroine. Plus I like her. I think she's badass in the mech. I am a fan of the hover tanks too, which apparently is a point of uh, debate. I like them. I mean, that spiral corkscrew shot where they go from half mode into uh, Guardian is pretty badass. Battleoid into Battleoid, I guess. Dana Sterling and Bowie Grant are on a routine night right, patrol Bowie. in the vicinity of what was once New Macross City, when they are cautioned against approaching... Really? We're in Macross City? Okay, let's go. Hold it. They're not wearing their full gear. Why aren't they in their tanks? Lieutenant, I don't know what it is. And I'm not all that anxious to find out what it is either. Hmm? Oh, just a joke, Lieutenant. It wasn't funny, Private. Well, I mean, I'd be the same way. I'm with Bowie. What are they doing here? They look like spotlights, but obviously that's not what they are. There can be no mistake. These primitives have attempted to disguise the protoculture with our radioactive substance. There's our, our red ace. Lieutenant, bioroids! Shut up! Keep your head down or they'll spot us. I sense an enemy presence. Oh boy. You guys gotta go. These are full on battle our uh, bioroids. From this area, it would be advisable to have a look. Oh my god, we see the pilot! Well, whatever it is, it's my guess that that character's in charge of the whole operation. Oh, wow. There they are. Do not attempt to escape. You will remain where you are. Lights. Are they... <gasps> oh, they are spotlights. Okay, so question real quick, friends. This is, we're getting good. Uh, he, uh, he was talking, but there was no mouth. Or they were talking, the, the Battleroid, uh, Bioroid pilot. Is that just, was that like a mix up in the, the, the graphics or did, or just like a mental, like telepathy type thing? They are screwed because these Bioroid. Severely outnumbered and unable to understand. Those chariots are fast. They choose the only course open to them. Thought of escape disappears. As soon as it becomes apparent, the invaders are not bent on capture, but destruction. Good narration. Hey, Lieutenant! These androids are trying to kill us! Yeah. On my signal, we both open fire! You got it! Woo! You have very little chance here. I appreciate your bravery, Dana. I take it back. Oh. Hang on. No, 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 Dana. They'll. Don't try it. They'll kill you. They're gonna get lucky. 
Lieutenant, stay back! So far, so good. Cool setup. So Macross City is where they were. Are they going after the SDF-1? Because they said that the wreckage of the SDF-1 and the SDF-2 were, were in there somewhere. That would make a ton of sense. What could they possibly have been looking for in that desolate, godforsaken piece of territory? What happened to it, I wonder? I've been told that you've had an actual encounter with alien bioroids. A couple. Sir, human or not, what would they be looking for out in that nowhere place? Would they be space pirates looking for salvage? No. No human beings have the knowledge to create Robotech spaceships. They are most likely in the service of the Robotech masters. So they're identifying him as human? Before we start talking about attacking, I want to know more about this new enemy of ours. But sir, my aide has been taken prisoner by the enemy invaders. Let me go after him. It was your decision, Lieutenant Sterling, to return to headquarters with the alien intelligence from Sector 16 that we are now encoding. It was the correct thing to do, Lieutenant. Then why do you sound like it wasn't? Come on now. Now, Dana, don't do something. I mean, Emerson's actually being realistic here. My hover bike's out of commission, Lieutenant. Make a run for it. Save yourself. Y'all know if you've been watching me other reactions, that's my thing. The bing bong moment, go on without me. I'll buy you some time. That's the thing that gets me more than anything. Self-sacrifice. Well, well, we haven't forgotten something, have we? Oh, Where's for your fuck's aid, sake. Lieutenant? This guy. Move it. That's pretty tough talk for somebody who can just abandon a kid like that. Are you serious? <laughs> Got it. <clears throat> hey! It is my considered opinion this squad needs some midnight maneuvers. Not in that off limits area. Hmm. I don't know what you're referring to, Dante. You will pass on the order to scramble immediately. Dana? I mean, I get it. Oh, there's the uh, ladder that'll kill me in an instant if I were ever to ride it. It's our first casualty on the mechanical ladder. What happened? We don't know. He just rode it and died. Without orders or approval from Earth Command Headquarters, the 15th Squadron roars out into the night. Yeah. I'm really curious about the Red Ace. And whether or not the rest of the Bioroids are manned. That looks real comfortable. Prisoner, you display much bravado, but like all primitives, you have not yet learned the value of silence. Did they lock him in somewhere? He quickly checks out the bleak confines of his prison and decides on a desperate course of action. Hell yeah, absolutely. I can only reach that grill up there. I like how they didn't take his knife. That's all right. Just a few more inches. Oh. Oh God, do not fall the entire way, which I think is exactly what happened. Hey, Lieutenant, don't you think we could do with a briefing or something? I don't want to seem pushy or anything, but since we're almost- I like how you can see the hands. That's kind of neat. Armaments, ballistic capabilities, anything? Well, they're big and nasty with enough firepower to blow four of us away without even trying. Well, I guess I've done it now. Committed an entire squadron to a rescue attempt without orders. I'll probably be court-martialed and shot. Well, maybe not shot, but court-martial is definitely on the table. <laughs> and we're no closer to a solution than we were before. Do you see how many cigarettes I've smoked? But we don't know what they're after. Or why. <clears throat> well, there's only one thing to do in this situation. You have a smoke? The only thing in that old wreck is useless, rotting robotechnology. Well, one man's junk is another man's protoculture. I'm just gonna shove protoculture into this saying. All units proceed to sector 16, northeast quadrant. The cool thing is, is like they'll already be there. Hmm. There may be eight by- Oh, nice. When do we attack, my proud beauty? Undaunted, we advance to serve the principles of freedom. <laughs> Through shot and shell, here we go into the mouth of hell. I like these guys. All right, let's move out. Watch it, Lieutenant. Up there. Good shooting. Okay, let's go. All right. I am really digging the ground warfare in this. I think the bioroids look cool too. Ooh. Units three, four, and five. You cover the lieutenant's advance. 
I mean, uh, tactically, I, it, it's really cool. <laughs> Did he get hit though? Ever since Roy, I'm uh, gun shy when somebody says they're all right. Woo! Ooh, splash one. What did I do to deserve this? Huh? Now what's going on? I go from liking and loathing Angelo. <laughs> Move in now, Lieutenant. We'll keep you covered. Yeah, we see like him. <laughs> in that moment. A flash of recognition passes between the two adversaries. It's because it's eerily similar to her parents. Get some time. Come on, let's do this. Oh no, you don't. You need more maneuverability and security. I'd go full battleoid. Oh my god. Now I got gotcha. you. Nice. I'm tired of fooling around. There it is. That's that shot. I love that shot. I'm sorry, and I'm not apologizing for it anymore. I like the mech, the mech design. Come on. Come on, Dana. Ooh, perfect. Wow, hi, Lieutenant. Can you get out of there? Be right with you, Bowie. Just reach back and pull that open. That's it. Why do we see that three times, but whatever. Ooh. Did she hit him? That's where his little thing is. It's just too narrow, Lieutenant. Stand back. Or stand more than a foot. Bowie, don't stop on the enemy. If you need a good character witness, I could appear for the prosecution. <laughs> what am I laughing at? I probably will end up in the stockade. <laughs> Come on. Well, it seems that Lieutenant Dana Sterling mobilized her squadron sometime last night and performed the rescue on her own. Lieutenant Sterling, you say? Ah, uh, so you're telling me that with a strength of only one squadron, Lieutenant Sterling managed to perform a rescue of such magnitude? The enemy troops are regrouping for a full frontal assault. And what's their strength? It's roughly equivalent to ours, sir. I'd say it'll be a pretty even battle. Hmm. Well, come on. I don't believe it. He's coming back for more? It's, it's impossible. I, it looks like, I'm wondering if he's the human inside or humanoid inside is actually hurt because she. Was that like long range artillery? Your enemy is regrouping for a massive counterattack. Reinforcements are on the way. You've got to hold. Fall back, Dana. You got what you came for. By an unusually welcome sight, a ring of ground-based military police surrounding the excavation site. <laughs> Usually the MPs are not someone Dana needs to see. Holy shit. Oh my God, get out of there. You're going to need air support, ASAFP. Oh my God. Troop carrier, get out of there. You're too exposed. Yeah, fall back, everybody. Oh, oh, no. No. oh my God. Come on, ship. They're retreating. I, I do the same thing. Maybe not hop, but. Oh my God. 
Are they being drugged towards that beam or is it a, like a shockwave? Oh my God. That's obviously some type of cruiser. The huge advanced command ship of the Robotech Masters rises slowly into the air, carrying not only the alien bioroids, but their strange commander as well. And why do I think I know him? Somehow I have a feeling that we haven't seen the last of them. We'd better be prepared for a fight to the death, because if we aren't, the only thing we'll have ahead of us will be a life of slavery. We just got done watching Robotech Masters episode 41, Half Moon, and the only thing left to do is to talk about it. All right, everybody, we just got done watching Robotech, the Masters, or Southern Cross, episode 41, Half Moon. Friends, I, I mean, I, again, I, I feel like I, I, I'm constantly apologizing for actually liking something. I have just been given so much kind of like foreshadowing, like, you know, um, and again, it's, it's nothing spoilery and it's nothing that's really like being down on Southern Cross. Um, just ever since I started Macross, everybody was like, ah, you know, I like the first and third legs. The second one's kind of weak. And so I guess it, you know, and again, it wasn't anything like super like negative, you know, people, I don't, uh, people don't care for the mechs, um, you know, that type of stuff. And then I, you just kind of hear, I had a lot of comments that came in that again, in, in their individual comments weren't anything bad at all. It's just kind of like, hey, I like three better than two, um, you know, and then, you know, people are like, ah, I liked one and three. I'm, I wasn't a big fan of two. All those I kind of added up like marbles in a in a glass. And at the time, whenever I started, I, I you all know, whenever I was watching Macross, I was like, oh, my God, am I going to this might be bad. You know, I hope I'm as into this. I don't want to have to like slog through this to get to the third part, you know. Okay, from now on, I'm not saying any more about it. I am, it's, you know, episode 41 already. We had several episodes under our belt. We've we've met, I'm assuming, most of the principles, or at least the initial principles for the, the series. I love it. I think it's great. I think it is ever, to me, to this guy, it's every bit as good as Macross. I'm as engaged as I was in uh, the Macross, kind of like outside the battle relationships and character building. I think it's really good. I think, and again, this is pure speculation on my part. I'm wondering if, you know, as a kid, I was trying to think, you know, if I was a kid and I watched this, I know I would have liked Macross. And as a kid, I'm looking at this, I'm like, would I have liked Southern Cross? And I thought to myself, yeah, I absolutely would have. But here's the thing. I think, and again, this is, uh, let's let's see, you know, what my opinion means. Absolute shit since I haven't watched any of Robotech. You know, I'm into this. But my knee jerk is, you know, kind of placing myself back into the 80s. I wonder if Southern Cross doesn't get a bad rap just because no one was expecting the change. You know what I mean? Like they went from Lisa and Max and everybody, you know, flying these cool ass Veritex and stuff, you know, the Valkyries. And then you go to the hover tanks and Dana. And I'm thinking that it might just not be that I dislike the second part, but that I just love the first part more. And I wasn't expecting the second part. And thus I have just kind of initial negative. What, what's this kind of reaction to it? And a, and a version that's based solely on, is this the right thing? Am I watching the right thing? You know, confusion, basically. Um, I don't know. What do you all think? If you watched it in the eighties, um, you know, as a kid and were able, you know, I, I'm so jealous that you were able to experience this as a kid. When you watched it, when you got to this area, do you think that might've been it, you know, or did you like Southern Cross? Were you like, oh, this is awesome. You know, it continues because I haven't heard many of those stories. I haven't heard many people saying, you know, oh man, I'm, you know, I, I'm a huge fan of Macross, but boy, oh boy, I really like Southern Cross too. And I liked, you know, the, the, the and was it New Dimension? I think it's the third one. Um, I always get that wrong. Help me out too. What's the third part called? Because, you know, there's Southern Cross and Masters for the second. And I don't really know what the third part is called colloquially. Like what, what's the community call it? It doesn't really matter though, because, you know, I, I'm very, I'm, I'm just, I'm happy everybody. And I'm I'm not going to say anything more about uh, liking Southern Cross unless I don't like it at some point, which I'm sure we're going to run into stinker episodes. You can't make this many episodes and not have stinkers. But so far, I have been really invested in everything. And again, I think it might also, you know, our, our chief protagonist is Dana. So I think that if you if you initially have a dislike for Dana, that this is going to be a tough sell because Dana's Dana's quirky, you know, and. 
again, I don't think it's quirky to the point of being uh, not honoring Max or Miria. You know, having her be awesome behind, you know, her hover tank and being able to take on like the Red Ace and stuff like that. That's awesome and completely expected. I mean, she, again, I mean, genetics, you know, fighter pilot stuff, you know, I, we're not sure exactly, you know, what will matriculate down to Dana, but let's just say that she's got, she's she may be better set to be a, a great ace than some other people with a less noble lineage as Max and Miria, right? But, um, you know, I, I really do like Dana's character and I like the kind of, even though there's kind of like those, oh, maybe I am going to the stockade, I can live with all that stuff, you know, <laughs> from here to the, the cows come home. But, um, you know, I like the rest of the people, you know, I, like I said, I go from liking and loathing Angelo, which is perfect for me. That's fine. You know, it gives me somebody to, to bust balls with and somebody to praise when I really like certain things that they're doing. Um, you know, Bowie, Bowie seems to be a really good compliment to Dana as well. I, I, I enjoy that in a weird way. You have kind of that, that different kind of emotional quality that you similar yet different that you had with Max and Ben, you know, they both kind of were carefree a little bit, but they had very different approaches to being carefree. And I feel that way too about Bowie and Dana, you know, Bowie, Bowie has a bet. I mean, Dana has no fear and that's a problem. I mean, she has fear for like being in the stockade, but she doesn't have fear for like rushing into an enemy established base, you know, um, which is awesome. I just think that, you know, when she's behind the, the controls of her hover tank, you know, I have yet to see her get upset. Now we did see her get upset whenever in volunteers, when she was flying in like that, that shuttle, the armed shuttle and stuff. So there's a really good mix of those things, but major, most of the time, unless Dana's thinking about it, fear's not on her mind. And I love that. I think it's so good. But, you know, Bowie does. Bowie does think about it very similar to Ben. Ben was, you know, tragically sort of aware of the terminal nature of the job that they were on, you know, even when he kind of offhandedly would not joke about, oh, I hope we make it back, you know, things like that. And Ben uh, eventually didn't, leaving that steak uneaten. But, you know, I'm again, it's a similar relationship, a similar supportive relationship between the two. You know, they're very good friends. Um, you know, it's obvious we've seen, you know, in the flashbacks and Sentinels and even Dana's story and stuff like that, that they've been together for a very long time, you know, friends for a very long time, lifelong friends. And I, I, I think that is a relationship that we haven't had a chance to fully explore because we did have Roy and we did have Rick. But again, Roy, to my understanding, and some of the kind of the peripheral stuff I allowed myself to read that you all sent me, um, you know, Roy wasn't like a part of Rick's life from the beginning. Roy showed up at the uh, Flying Circus and stuff like that and kind of became like an idol of a young Rick. So it wasn't like they grew up together, you know, Big Brother's a good, you know, moniker, but um it's, it's sort of misleading because to my understanding, they were not together for the majority of Rick's life. He came around, you know, when Rick was a little bit older. So this is our first kind of exploration into lifelong friends, you know, people that have known each other from basically birth to earth, you know, as things are going right now. Um, and I like that. I like that, you know, there wasn't really any hesitation in Dana to go after Bowie, even when told not to by Emerson. You know, she went ahead and was like, I'm going to take him out of maneuvers and to hell with it. If I go to the stockade, I go to the stockade. If I, you know, get shot, I'll get shot. But this is Bowie. And obviously there's a different, you know, set of standards. She's not going to rules. Emerson's rules and Emerson's orders went only so far. You know, she will agree to them for the majority of things. But we've just learned in this episode when Bowie's life is at stake. And we're not sure if that translates to even people like Angelo, we're not sure what Dana is willing to do as far as following orders. But Bowie, we know for a fact now, it doesn't matter if she has the resources available to her, even if she doesn't, she's going back for him. I mean, she had a rifle and her basically her hover bike, and she was going to take on bioroids to try to get Bowie back when he was initially captured. I mean, she literally risked her life. It just happenstance that she wasn't killed right there. And so we know now she'll do anything for him. And that's an awesome kind of thing to like a tent pole that we can put now to kind of hold up the, the personality that is Dana Sterling. Bowie. Bowie is a very important part of the person that Dana is. Without Bowie, she'll do anything for him. I, that's, uh, that's what we can take away from this episode. She will do anything for him, including risk her life, you know, including risk her career, including risking the lives of others, you know? Dana didn't stop to think, you know, we got to get Bowie back, but what if I lose Angelo or Phillips or, you know, uh, anybody else in the squad? That wasn't a consideration. She needed to get Bowie back. And so now we know a little bit more about Dana. 
So far, my friends, I am just absolutely loving this. Now, the one thing I did want to ask you, and I mentioned this in the reaction, that um, they were saying, you know, the, the Macross City, obviously something must have happened to Macross City. And I don't know if it was like Chiron's final attack. Maybe there was like fallout or something like that. But um, obviously there is no city now. Around. And again, I know that this, this is a different property and they can't really have the city if they want to use this locale. So I understand saying it's not there, but I'm wondering how narratively they explained that. I know that so many of you know, like kind of like the between the lines history of Robotech. And I was wondering, you know, what happened to Macross or new Macross City that caused it to now be this desolate wasteland that Emerson uh, I gave it, you know, titled it. Interesting, interesting stuff. And I can only assume that they were going after the SDF-1 or maybe the SDF-2, you know, depending upon how much of the wreckage was left, you know, to get it whatever they believed was still on board the initial SDF-1. That's my thought that they, they still have old information. They still have, you know, their information's 15 years old now. And so they're thinking, oh, we got to get the protoculture factory, maybe, that I'm sure they've taken off of that boat, you know, when a, or it was destroyed with it, or they've replicated it or something. But it, they have, pro, uh, the humanity has protoculture. So very interesting and very honest to the timeline, not just letting them kind of, you know, magically know and hand wave away any mention of the SDF-1. Really cool to kind of go back to that, friends. If you could do me a favor, hit that like button, smash that subscribe, ring that bell for notifications. It greatly helps out a small channel and allows me to alert you next time we go live with Robotech. And of course, if there's anything that we do, Robotech included, that you would like early or in its full-length format, the link to the Patreon is in the description, my friends. But all that is then, this is now. And now, unfortunately, it's time to say goodbye. So where should we say goodbye from? Well, friends, I say we say goodbye from, because we're, we're, we're members of the 15th. We're part of that, where we, we fly. We, you know, we're in the hover tanks as well. And so it is up to us that whenever we are told that it's time for surprise midnight maneuvers, that we don't question it all. We know what Dana's up to, sort of. Do we need to be told? Nope. Why? because we're all members of the 15th. And if one of us is in trouble, all of us are in trouble. Until such time as we all get into trouble again, my friends, Vulcan roll, and I'll see you.